which is, you know, can you reflect a little bit on what Stan Lee meant to you? Uh, well, yeah, I, I, I just posted a thing about Stan Lee's death. Um, I can't claim to have been a friend of Stan. Um, I, I met him like a half dozen times, um, but he never remembered me from one meeting to the next, so it was always like I was meeting him for the first time. But he was always very genial and generous and funny, so you know I didn't mind meeting him for the first time over and over again. Um, but that's, in, in some sense, that's where one of the big things that began for me was uh, uh, the first words of mine ever published was a letter in Fantastic Four number 20, Dear Stan and Jack. Um, I was talking about Fantastic Four number 17 and um, how much uh, I loved it and it was great. I, I compared Stan to Shakespeare, you know, I sort of said, Shakespeare, move over, Stan Lee has arrived. Can't imagine why he would choose to print that letter. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I published a number of other letters in, in uh, other Marvel comics, Fantastic Four, Spider-Man, Avengers. If you go back to the comics of the early mid-60s, you'll find these letters there. And in those days, when, when you, they published a letter in the letter column, they published your entire address. So peop, other comic book fans started writing me, saying they'd seen my letter, and they, they would send me a copy of their fanzine, which was these you know, dittoed or mimeographed amateur publications with amateur stories in them. And I started writing amateur stories for these fanzines and people liked them and they, they you know, would write letters of comment about, oh, I really like that George Martin story and get more from him. Um, and it was all very encouraging to, uh, you know, someone who was basically a shy high school kid and suddenly people were liking this thing I'm doing and were, so I, continued to write more and more stories. If, if Stan had not published my letters, um, and uh, I, I would not have gotten those fanzines, if I didn't get the fanzines to start writing for them, would I have gotten the, the confidence and all that to, to go into writing and to dream of possibly making a, a, a career from writing? Um, I, I don't know, who knows where, where a different path would have led, and it all, it all began from that, uh, you know, relatively uh, simple beginning. But I, I was a huge Marvel fan. I mean, I had, of course, I'd read comic books before that, you know, and primarily the DC superheroes. But by then, I was, you know, I was in high school. I was largely growing out of high school, growing out of comic books. I, at one point, I actually gave my comic books away, which I regret now because they're really valuable. But then I started all over again with Marvel. So I, I collected and, and read all of those things, and uh, it, uh, it really did change my life. There was one downside to that letter that I published in, in Fantastic Four number 20, which at some point, while comparing Stan to Shakespeare, I used the phrase, by gumbo. <laughs> this was not a wise choice of phrase. Someone, another kid from my high school found it uh, somewhat, and then for the rest of the next year, I was tormented by my classmates who would come up to me and say, buy gumbo at every goddamn opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you pick up that phrase? Where did I you don't pick know. up that phrase? And <laughs> we had no gumbo in Bayonne. <laughs> I didn't even taste gumbo until I got to New Orleans many years later. But, um, but it was like, sort of like saying, buy gum, you did a good job. But yes, buy gumbo? Yes. Like buy a, gumbo, it was a great yes. Yeah, you were, you were building an authorial persona. Uh, I was. I have to credit Michael, Don, and Tom also with this element of it. You know, Marvel Universe was an interconnected universe across many titles with a history that it, tr it tried to honor, that things happened in the universe and they stayed, you know, Gwen Stacy died and for a period of time stayed dead and so forth. What, was there any, anything about universe and world building that you, that you think Stanley innovated that you learned from? Yes, I mean, they, exactly what you said there. I mean, they, 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 the things, at least in the early 60s, things actually happened in the Marvel Universe. I mean, the, the DC Universe of the 50s, um, if, you, if you read like Superman or Batman or anything, nothing ever changed. The stories were completely circular, you know. Superman would have some sort of adventure or Batman would fight a villain and he would 
defeat him in the context of the issue, and at the end you would be exactly where you would start it. And nothing would ever change, no one would ever die, no one would ever have a fight. Um, the villains were villains, the heroes were heroic. You know, you, DC started the Justice League of America, which was like eight of their heroes, all of whom had exactly the same personality, and they all got along wonderfully. And um, they often you know, would you, say, "By gumbo," and you, so. You couldn't tell them apart, except for their. You know, one of them had a red costume with a lightning bolt, and the other one had a green costume with a lantern on it. So. Um, but the Marvel characters were all, they had real personalities and they were flawed and things actually happened, you know? I went to high school with Peter Parker. We were both in high school and then we both graduated high school, like pretty much the same time, we were in sync. I went to college, Peter went to college and we had, you know, he had new roommates and it was a different environment for him and he got a new girlfriend. You know, Superman never changed his girlfriend. It was like Lois Lane and never went anywhere, which is years past. Spider-Man went through girlfriends, you know, like a real teenager would. He had Liz Allen and then he had Betty Brandt and then, then he had Gwen Stacy and then, of course, Mary Jane showed up and, that you know, it, it was, it, it seemed so much more real and it seemed like things were actually happening. Now, admittedly, at some point, Spider-Man and I got into sync. Somehow, I'm now old enough for Social Security and Peter is still in high school. I, I don't know how he got back in high school when he had graduated and gotten married and all of that, but uh, we, we did get out of sync, which is a, a pity, but I always loved the fact, I mean, a story or a character should, should change, you know? The, the events that happen change us, you know? People who, who, you know, get married or get divorced or have, have a love affair or they, they go off to war and have experiences. These things change them. They change who they are. And I, I always feel the same should be true for fictional characters or comic book characters. If, if something is going to happen, it, it should change you and affect you and make you different. That's, to my mind, the art of good storytelling. And it was Stan Lee who really brought that, at least for a few years, to comic books. <laughs>